You started this conversation talking about the Alliance for Hippocratic Medicine and how that was formed in August 2022. This case could end up being a loss for them, but you seem to think that they might keep going. Do we know who is funding them? Who are the players behind this organization? And what else should we be watching for from them? Yeah, so there is a larger national movement. And if you just look at what has been happening at the states, um, both before Dobbs, after Dobbs, um, there is a concerted effort to use language like fetal personhood um, and to create a power structure and a dynamic when the life of an embryo has more value than the life of a woman. And there is a goal here to get rid of abortion access throughout the country and to also get rid of contraception access, contraceptive access. And, you know, this isn't a secret. There's something called like the 2025 plan. You can just Google it. It's very obvious. It's out there. The information is all out there. And like, we want to live in a country where we have equitable, safe access to health care as women and where our lives are valued. You know, the, the argument in this case that the doctors were making were, you know, they don't want to be put in a circumstance where they have to choose between their conscious value and saving a woman's life. Now, to me, I'm like, if you're an emergency room doctor and your immediate instinct isn't to save the life of the woman, regardless of your feelings about a certain type of healthcare, I mean, that to me is the inherent problem. Um, we should be valuing the life of the living and the life of women. And until we are doing that and centering patient care, women's care and the care of children, especially you know, centering equity and patients who don't have access to healthcare, Medicaid patients, rural patients, low income patients, black and brown and minority communities, our maternal mortality rates in this country are the highest in the developed world and 3.5 times higher for black women. And the rates of maternal mortality are significantly higher in states with abortion bans. OBGYN units are closing all over the country. Doctors are choosing not to go into OBGYN care because of bans. So these are the issues we really want to think about. And if we, you know, to your question, to your point of like, who is behind this? I mean, far right nationalist Christian extreme, like Christian extremist groups. And they're a minority of the population. The majority of this country believes in the right to get abortion. But this small vocal minority has taken power through gerrymandering, through voter suppression, through all of these different ways. And now this is the country that we live in. And we have to do everything we can in order to ensure that our votes are getting out there, our voices are getting out there, and we're protecting not just access to abortion care, but to democracy.